right, everyone, we will go ahead and get started. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Um, uh, I, I would like to welcome you to the uh, welcome and welcome back, I should say, to the Matrix Gold webinar. Uh, my name is Bo, and I'm the uh, Western Territory Sales Director for Gym Vision. Um, I cover anywhere from Hawaii to Texas on up, you know, for the United States. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to make sure everyone can hear and see. Uh, if you can, if you guys can see us, uh, please send us a chat, just letting us know, hey, we can see you and we can uh, hear you. Okay, thank you, Arlene. Can always count on you. I appreciate it. All right, so today we have a special treat in store for you guys. Today we have uh, Mosin, who is um, a great CAD designer um, and an educational partner from from uh, from Gym Vision uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. So, as I said, uh, he's an educational partner, so he knows quite a bit about Gym Vision products and software, uh, specifically Matrix Gold. Um, I've kind of seen a little bit what he has in store and uh, what he has planned today, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Uh, so, with that being said, Mosin, welcome. There you are. So welcome. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, Bo. How are you? Um, um, uh, good. I, I, I'm really happy that I'm here, but uh, I think my uh, it doesn't allow me to open my video and it says... Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. whenever I uh, send oh, I the, uh, the, the permissions over, you'll be able to. But uh, thanks for joining okay. us. I, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I'm really happy and I'm super glad uh, that I'm here. Thank you so much. Well, uh, with, with that, I will uh, go ahead and kind of pass things over to you. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or, uh, you know, you think of something, want to see something in particular, uh, please send them. You can send them via the chat feature or uh, there's also a Q&A tab. Uh, so, so just uh, send them to us that way. And uh, Mosin, you can uh, take it from here and uh, share your screen if you if you wish. Oh yes, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, now I'm sharing my screen. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, now you can see my screen, right? We can. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so first of all, I want to say thank you to Bo. I want to say thank you to Oreo and GM Vision uh, team. Uh, they are super great. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to say thank you to all the audience. Uh, and uh, today I hope I can show you amazing features of Matrix Gold. I want to show you there. So today, uh, I would like to talk about um, 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 network command first in, uh, in, in first parts of my uh, um, webinar. I want to first talk about network command. I wanted to show you some tips and tricks. And then I wanted to uh, make a ring uh, and mix network command with matrix gold amazing parametric commands that helps me to uh, make a ring and then I can modify and edit it in a very easy way. So in this webinar, you can see that uh, how powerful metric goal it is. Okay, so um, first um, uh, let's talk about the network. Actually, I always, uh, when, when I want to explain the network to uh, my students and um, I always say that a network is an advanced sweep command. You have to think like you are sweeping and just you need to understand about U and V directions, okay? Because the rhino says that, okay, we have sweep one, we have sweep two, but it, actually it couldn't make uh, sweep three, sweep four, sweep five. So it made, um, uh, it made uh, uh, a network command and matrix goal two and uh, they combine together and make a very powerful network command. So how it works? I want to show you in one example. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, I make a circle in cur from curve menu. Okay. And then I rebuild it because as you know, uh, default curve, default, uh, default uh, circle command in metrics code is uh, actually is made of four arcs. So we want to change it to nerves curve. So we have to rebuild it and change the debris from two to three. So we don't have any kink in uh, quad points. So we have eight and three. And then I turn on uh, the control points and I move a scale a little bit inside. Okay, great. And then I go to arc and make direction, click, click. And uh, you know that if you want to move vertically in vertical way, you need to hold control and then click, and then you can go in vertical way, okay? If you click here, you, uh, you have half a circle, half arc. But if you click here, if you go to arc and then direction, click, click here, oh, sorry. click, click here, and then now you can control uh, the height. Okay, great. And then I make interpolate curve, and then I move it in for, I copy it, okay. In, uh, in, um, um, in normal sequ sequence that we do uh, network, we split these, right? We split these by these and we split these by these, okay? So we have something like this. So now we have, you can assume, you can imagine like that. We have one, two, three, four rails and we have one profile, okay? So when you select all and then we click on network, we have it, okay? So we have a pole where the ISO curve gathered together is here. In, in another way, we can make the network command, okay? Split these by these, and then we have one, two, three rails and one profile. And then we do network again. So we have these. So now I move the pole from the top to side to, to, to this side to this side actually to align and then now I split these by I split these by these so now again one two three and one and then we do network so now the pole comes here and then in the last version I, I, uh, I have to be cr uh, uh, create, uh, create, I have to be creative. I need to uh, split this curve to four parts. And then I can imagine that I have one, two, three rails and one, two, three profile. And then we select all, and then we run the network command. So in this case, you can see, you couldn't see any pole. So in the, the, uh, this topology, this surface is very good for um, making pattern on that because you don't have any pole, so you don't have, you, you have less distortion because in uh, the double curvature surfaces, you always have distortion, so you cannot uh, ignore it. But in this case, you have less, distortion because you don't have any pole here, okay? So this is the network command, these this four ways to make a network surface from curves. Okay, so now I, I would like to make a ring combining a network command and matrix code parametric uh, features, Great. Right. So first, I need ring grade, so I go to quick commands and pick ring grade. So on the right side, I can see the dynamic commands tab. I can uh, change my ring uh, finger size to any uh, size I want. So I choose it. Okay, so now I have it. So I go to gems, and here I want to connect one gem to ring grade. So when I change my ring grade, because it saves the location of uh, gem 
so when, when I change my ring rate, the, the, the position and location of the gem, gem also change and move. So I go to this command, gem on ring rail. I choose it. So with these handles, I can change the size. I can change the Z offset in anything that I need. Okay, so I choose this is okay for me now. I click and I choose gym offset curve. So it gives me the layout of gym, but it's completely parametric, okay? So I wanna choose it 0 0.8. What does it mean parametric now? It means if I change my ring rail, everything that connect together, they will be moved. Okay, great. I go to gem guide, click on that, and it gives me four uh, small curves that actually they are very helpful, okay? So on the right side in my dynamic commands, I can choose uh, the position of these small curves. I prefer to choose this, just two in these uh, positions, okay? But I wanna uh, give them offset, actually girdle is pacing. So the same as the uh, uh, offset curve here, 0 0.8, very good, right? So we, I have on the top, I wanna make another one. So I click, gem guide again, but now I, I want to move it on my C plane, okay? So before I do that, I just go to front and then I just use the dim command to measure the distance from uh, the girdle of gem to center. It's about uh, roughly, I, I don't need to be 100% exactly. Okay, so it's about 14.57, 14.57. Uh, okay. So I go to gym guide. So here, minus 14.57. Oh, sorry, girdle, not, not the girdle spacing. I go to perspective, you can see better. Gym offset here, no. Gym guide, okay, placement here. Minus 14. So I move it down, but I want to change the position. I just need this in, in two, okay? Because I want to use blend, blend these to here, and I want to blend here, okay? I just need these two. But I have to change the girdle uh, spacing. So it can be 10 is too much, six. Somewhere like here, or maybe seven, no problem. Now I don't care. So I have these two. Another one. Oh, let me change this one. Edit to four. So I need four because I wanted to blend here also. So I make another one. Gym guide again. Okay. Placement. I just changed the same, minus 14.7, very good. I wanna change position to this one, because here is same. So we don't have, in um, a gym guide, we don't have uh, on north and south. So we have to make four because I need here, okay, great, perfect. So let's see what happened when I change my ring rail. Actually, when I change my ring rail, as you can see, uh, these small curves also moved. But uh, as you can see, it's semi-parametric, it's not completely parametric. So er every time when I make a, a network command, each time I have to change the position of these a small care, but they, they help me a lot, okay? So I have it now. So I just change it to, just make it here, very good. 
So now I go to curve menu and I go to blend curve command. Okay. Blend curve. One, two. So I have it. I can see. Perfect. Another one. One, two. So I have it. So I don't need to repeat again because I can mirror. Okay. Very good. So I mirror this one. I go to transform. So we have two different mirror command. Parametric mirror with the lighting bolt uh, on the corner, on top corner and normal mirror, but I don't want to use the normal mirror. I want to use parametric mirror. Okay, so click. We go here. So we have here, I just want to make a mirror on y, y, y axis. That's it. And another one. the other one. Good. Now again, I want to blend between these two small curves. Okay, curve again, blend curve, one, two. Okay, very good. And I don't need to repeat again because I can mirror. So I go to mirror command again, but parametric one, not normal one. Transform, mirror. And now I can turn on multi and mirror this one. So now I have four. And you know that if I click on this blend, we have some handles that as you can see, I can control the shape of my ring. Yeah, you can see with these small handles, you can control the shape. And even here, if you go to edit and just you change the girdle spacing, okay, for example, 0 0.2 or 0 0.5, or anything that you want or one millimeter. So you can see everything is updated. The shape, the blend, everything is updated. Edit, you can see everything that I connect together is updating. Okay. Any questions so far? Everything is good? Seems like they're all following okay. along. Um, there's a bit of latency, so uh, just kind of, you know, uh, okay. yeah, slow it down just a bit for them, but it's, uh, it's looking great. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so now I just um, uh, use the blend command to connect these small curves together. Okay, so I use these. Uh, so now I want to use network command on that. Okay, so as you can see, I have one, two profile, but as you know, in network command now, because it's closed, it must be close to. So now amazing join command, but history one helps me a lot. So join history. So now I joined everything together. Okay, now I have it. So this is join history, right? So if you wanna change it, you have to go to blend and change it and everything change again. Perfect. So now I go to network command. I select these, these, and these, and then network. So I have my ring on top. So what happened? As you know, the network command has history too. So if I change these, edit, 
if I change it, change two. Again, edit. If I change this, it's updating, it's changing. Okay, so I try to uh, keep the shape beautiful. So the thickness is fine, this two, this one is fine, this one is fine. I just want to extrude both sides to see the shape. Okay, no problem. I just need to make it smaller. So edit. So I go here and girdle spacing minus 1.5. Let's see. Okay. Good. So what happened if I change the gem? Let's see. Edit or make it bigger. Is updating? Yes, you can see is updating. What happened if I change it to oval? Okay, something something happened, but no problem. We can fix it. We have to go here, edit, and then we just change it to this one, and it's updating. So we change to oval. So I don't need to repeat again and again and again, because if we don't have this feature in metric school, we have to repeat in um, matrix nine or even in Rhino or any software. We have to repeat everything again, but with these amazing features, we don't need to repeat anything again. We, we, we just make one thing and then we can update it. Okay, so now what I want to do I want to put pattern on this surface. I want to make some things and then put pattern on this surface. So let me check. Everything is perfect. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I would like to choose uh, auto base command. So what what the uh, what does uh, this command do? It's take surface, it takes your surface, and it's flatten on your on C plane. So when you have any kind of design on that, you can make it, and then you can, and it's automatic, actually, uh, with the next command, we automatically can um, retain it back on surface. We can flow it on, uh, flow back on surface, okay? So what I need to do, I just select the surface, I click on auto base, okay? As you can see, it's very similar to, um, the shape is very similar to create UV curves, but is not create UV curve. Uh, the, the size is not the same. So the metrics will use its own strategy to make this surface. And, it, and it's uh, really much better than create uh, UV curves. It's really much more better. Okay, so we have it. If I change it to just change the color, I can or not, because I, I don't want to mix with this uh, line, with these curves. So, as you can, each surface, uh, every surface has every surface has a seam. What does it, the seam is the, uh, is, uh, is the place that the end of start and end of surface touch each other. So I wanted to be sure that the end, uh, the, the seam of my surface is somewhere like here. So I have to use the seam, surface seam to be sure. Yeah, it's, on the, it's here, right. You, you don't need to change your seam because if you change your seam, you will um, uh, destroy your um, um, pa parametric features, okay? So you don't, just to be sure that where is the seam, to find it and to be sure that you can make uh, the pattern on that, okay? 
So I make one line here. And then I, I want to I, I want to find uh, this uh, the middle of these uh, distance these lengths. So it's really easy. Uh, maybe uh, uh, some someone says that you just make one line and then you click and then you make it right. But I want to teach you a trick. Uh, if you if you move your mouse on object snap and hover. Uh, over your object is now you can see it's change if I press control as you can see we have uh, a persist object snap that we have it we can see it and if I press control and um, move my mouse over this object snap we can see uh, one shot object snap that we can use just one time okay and then if you press shift and move your um, and move your mouse on uh, again. Okay, you can see this two is changing between and percent. It's changing just this two. So I want to choose the between. So it's really easy. Just line and then shift between one, two. So it can it find the middle for you. Right. Okay. So what I want to do is I just make, um, but let me extrude this curve, this curve at my ring rail, and then select this surface and select this solid and make use command intersect. So I have one line here, one line here on my surface, right? So I use create UV just to, uh, add, just I need these lines um, because I wanna make a pattern. So I don't want my curves goes inside my ring rate. So I need to have these lines. So I use create UV, these, oh, sorry. create UV, and then it asked it, it ask me select points and curves on surface. So I have these, and also I can say that I have these. So as you can see, it helps me a lot. But I can 90 degree. Uh, 180, I have it, okay? So it can be somewhere like this if I want. Okay, no problem. So let me delete. Let me let me. I don't need this. I don't need this. Let me first see where is my my design is here. So it's here. It makes me much more easier for this. I don't need these two. No problem. So I just make one line from here to here. Okay, and then I use transform. A smart flow, it's a very good command. It helps me a lot to design some things on the surface and then move it on my surface because working on flat object is much more, is much more easier than working on 3D object on, on, uh, view, on your viewport. You know, if we wanted to edit it, it's really difficult. But if you make it here, it's much more easier, okay? so. A smart flow, select surface base, okay, and then select surface destination, okay. So surface destination is here, but it's important where you click it. So I want to choose it here. So as you can see, these lines help, helps me a lot 
Why? Because it's telling me that this is your start point. Okay, so it's a star. So this is your start. Okay. So if you design something here, it comes here. Okay. And then we have this also. It shows that this is this part is here. So I don't I don't want this part goes here. So I can I can here just we flip. Yes, it's we. It's my we. right you can see so it's here it's from the top it moves to down you can see it's from the top it moves to down and press enter very good so now you need to go to a smart flow menu edit and select object object click and ask you select object to flow. We can choose this one and then we can press enter. So as you can see, it moves from here to here, right? It moves from here to here. So now what I need to do, it's completely um, uh, parametric now because if you move it, you can see, you can control everything that you want. So it starts from here and then goes here. So it starts from here and then goes here, right? Perfect. So now I want to make my design here. I can make anything that I want. So I go to a smart flow. I don't need it now. Okay, I delete it, so I don't need it now. Very good. I press enter, and then I can make something like this. So this part actually, this part, this part actually is here. Okay, very good. So now I can make something like this. Maybe I just make some things fast, and then I can control control it that is okay or not. Okay, so I want to fade it here. It goes here. It goes here. I just need to make two curves, three curves. I can make another curves here. I can make another curves here like this too. Okay, no problem. Something like this. Let's see. So I go to Smart Flow again, edit, object, just to be sure that everything is okay. So yeah, I can see it. So it's something like this. I just need to move it a little bit. So I go to for view, I change my view, something like this, and then F10, not this one, F10. I don't want to go to my ring rate, so I just move it a little bit. I make it big enough so I can change it to. I'm going to change this design too. As you can see, because uh, the, uh, the smart flow is completely parametric, um, when we change everything on flattens, flattened surface, we can see online. 
so I can make something like these. Okay. Very good. Yeah, it goes here and it goes here. So now, when we found that this design is perfect, what we need to do, I want to make a surface. So what I need to do, edit, I don't want this. OK. I just trim all the curves. I don't want this, this. I don't want this, too. I just make one line here, one line here. We select all join. Then we extrude it both sides. We can get one millimeter now or 1.5 or anything that we want now. So 1.5, right? Oh. And then I go to a smart flow again, object, this, press enter. Now we have it, but we can move it up because the normal surface is inverted, so no problem. We can just move it up. So now let me hide this surface. So now we have it, right? Eight. Go down, go down. Okay, to have it. Later, bit down. Or, or I can change this to edit here, gem guide. Okay, I want to girdle spacing, maybe one millimeter. Let's see. So it's edited here a bit. So it's fine. We can these edit again. Let's move it a little bit. Placement 0 0.6. It goes up, right? The surface. Oh, just a moment. Sorry, something's right here. We have to update these two. Edit. This one needs to be updated too, because this is one of the rail on the top. So the offset, three, right? Okay, it goes up too. You can see it goes up. So the surface is up now. I can make it more up to touch this one, right? Okay, so why it doesn't come up? Because actually it's updated. This one also updated. So as you can see, when I update my surface, the auto base also updated. So I just look at this, I go here, and then I just need to scale the curve because I want to keep my history on. Okay. Oh, sorry, 100% I uh, destroyed my history because I move overall shape. Okay, no problem. I just move these two. So I move these two. Let's turn off this one also. Very good. I love when so now, history updates and it, uh, <laughs> it, it does that and it works well for you. Um, we do have a question though. Um, yeah. What is... So Laurie asked, 
what was the command you used to project the ring rail to this ring surface? Uh, the, were... in, uh, the intersect command. If we have uh, a surface, uh, if two surfaces uh, connect, uh, intersect each other, with an inter uh, with intersect command, we can find uh, the intersect point, intersect curve. I can show you if you want again. This is the surface. Yeah, this I is think. my. All right. Yeah. And then we can say this one and this one type intersect. Type intersect. And then we have this line. We have this curve. Right. Yep. She said, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Right. So as you can see, we cannot do the same in, uh, we cannot uh, uh, the same like this in matrix nine is impossible. Just with these small curves, uh, with this uh, small curve, just with this parametric blend, we can make uh, 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 this design and it's uh, okay. time saving commands is very good for me. I, I, I use uh, this a lot. So for example, here, you can see, let me show you now. If I change the gem, edit, I wanna show you some things, change again to round, okay, right? Now nothing happened, why? Because a little bit uh, confusing for um, actually matrix gold, you have to edit and change this to this and then everything updated. And what what's what I use sometimes whenever uh, you know you have a lot of creation curves and stuff like that, you're able to rename the commands so that way, you know, whenever you're oh, modeling, yes. you can you can oh, hit yes. the, the kebab menu and rename and say, hey, this is or origin curve. This is so that's another way to uh, exactly to help out. right right. It helps a lot right right right. It helps a lot to rename it exactly. Thank you so much. Uh, so now, even let's challenge this um, surface to something much more difficult. I want to challenge it. Quotient square. Okay, and then edit to these. Right. <laughs> Like you don't have you don't need to create anything again and again and again and again then amazing uh, again transform I go to mirror command I have it here right okay and then I don't want, I want a bit multiple, not this one, this one. I have it. And then I just need to change a little bit my design. So I can't, I prefer to use, uh, I wished I could, I didn't break uh, my um, history of care, but no problem. Now I just need to uh, use the cage edit command word to fix it just a little bit. Right, we can make something like this. This and this. I don't need this. I don't need this. These curves. Okay, let's play a little bit with these parameters. So let's make it a little bit edit. 
if we want, we can, let's change these curves. Let's go here, curve, and then edit. I just want to make it a little bit go down. So it's updating, you can see. I want to make it a little bit more edit. Oh, sorry. This. So I have this. I go in the wrong position because I'm using edit on mirror curve, so it doesn't show me. So I have to use in the, the original one. Let's a little bit make it like this. Now oh, it's closing so my ring grade, so it doesn't a good idea. So you have to cage edit again. So you can edit again. So you can make it more like this. So as you can see, when I uh, manipulate my uh, curves, I can see everything on uh, uh, live. So it helps me a lot to make this kind of design and to, to help me this kind of rings, okay? So even if I don't, don't want these, I can make it a little bit go up. So I just go here. Go down, right? right? And just and 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 you can see just with the changing of your gym, everything updated and helps you a lot in this case. Perfect. So, any question now? No, nothing. <laughs> Doesn't look like Everything it. Good? <laughs> Every, everybody was blown away by the uh, the parametric history and the updating. Yeah, it's very nice. It's very. Um, I I use uh, actually. Let me show you these. I wanna um, uh, to show you uh, these. Let me show you. Let me hide it. And I have this one. I make something like this, just with this amazing um, uh, updating system. I make something like this, and then you can make the bottom one just with. If if in this case, if in this case you can uh, change the shape, or you can. Um, I mean that. Uh, you can use a lot of pattern, a lot of different curves, a lot of uh, um, designs on that. And after that, when you, whenever you want to change it, you can change it. You can make it smaller. You can, you can do whatever you want. So I, I recommend you to all the Matrix Code users that uh, try to find, uh, um, I think a lot, to find this way to make um, uh, to put, put my pattern uh, on network command. Because I was thinking that if I, if is matrix goes able to do it, I always say that yes, it's able. So I have to, to find a way to blend the curves together. But I know that maybe it has some problems because uh, you have to edit some, uh, some things, but it's, it still saves 60% uh, of your time. For example, if I change my ring grade, if I change my ring grade, as you can see, so everything's moved, right? And it goes up a little bit. So you have to, again, go here. Oh, sorry. And then edit and then move it down. And one, uh, one tip, uh, you cannot use these handles to bring these gym guys down because uh, the limit, uh, it has limits uh, until the, uh, I think, um, until here. You have to type it. You cannot, if you use it, it goes up. So I recommend you use uh, the numbers to do it. So I ha you have to say that minus 16, 
Okay, so it goes here, so it's too much. Minus 15, mm -hmm. it's not bad. I, I, I didn't measure it. Okay, so something like this, it goes down. And again, I did this one, the same, minus 15.25, okay? So it's updates. And then I have to go here and I try to not allow it comes inside my ring ray. So I have to cage it. it still, I made a mistake. Sorry, I didn't break my history. You know, it's not a good idea. So you have to just play with that and then move it up. Okay, if I didn't break my history, I have less problem. Actually, I break my history of curves. So when I move it with the cage edit, maybe I have some issues for my, uh, for this part, but it's okay now. Well, we do have one more question. Uh, yeah. AJ, AJ said, if I wanted to change the profile shape uh, into a round and the stone would still maintain a cushion, would that be possible? Um, so- Oh, actually, um, we don't have uh, these features in uh, 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 in uh, um, uh, these commands, gem yes. offsets. Yeah, so, we don't have so these. So it's yeah. How you how you built this one? It could not. But initially, if you could have placed a uh, a dummy gem, which, which is what I call, um, and when you got the gem offset curve, you could have done it right. that way. But um, he didn't uh, intend yeah, you to, have to for that. Yeah. Yes, you have to hide the gem, right, right. And, and now you have two gems that you have to control everything together, right. Yeah, so I recommend you if you wanna, um, if uh, sometimes uh, when we have, when, uh, when we think um, uh, that we need to have everything, actually we make uh, we make uh, complexity for ourselves. So we have to think that with these uh, features, what I can do, I have to, so I have to bring one dome and then uh, hide it. So we have to uh, mix them together, right? But in this ring, I recommend uh, to use just um, uh, uh, the gem and gem on. So we, you have less curve, you have less headache because still we have a lot of curves and a lot of connections that we need to control. So now, for example, this one too, uh, because I joined together. So if I go to blend this one, not this one, this one, right? Oh, no. Uh, this is my It. Where is my join? Okay, this is my join. But oh, it's here, it's hidden because I joined together, it's hide, right? So now I even I can control the shape of this one too. So I want to make it less. You can see I bend it more. Again. Blend, or you want to make it Y, right. right? So you can work with these. Just be careful, don't make it so bad. Add it. I don't want to add it, it's bad shape. I don't like it. Don't go this way. Right. I have it. Okay. Uh, so, because I thought that uh, it takes, uh, I have just a, a one hour slay station. So I prepare for one hour on the, uh, so if uh, uh, anybody have any question or they need me to explain some things about the matrix, I, uh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can talk about this model or any question that you have. For the bottom also, you can, uh, you can just create the profile and then play with the profile and then you can uh, put the profile here and then make it exactly the same as that I did. Or if you, when you make the network, if you could 
if you could cho uh, choose uh, the sequence of the rays and change the scene to the other place, you can make one surface here and then with amazing command, duplicate, uh, duplicate edge with parametric, you can duplicate and then sweep again. So when you move this one, actually the duplicated parametric also move, so you don't have any problem about that. It's a very good feature if you wanna use it. Now I, I, I can say that most of importance parametric curves we have here, and I really like it. We can mix them together and we have a very, very uh, good and very nice result that we have. Okay. So I'm here to answer any question or anything that uh, you can yeah, ask me. We, yeah. we did have one kind of general question. Um, he, he asked, okay. so I have to think before I start to design um, yeah. but whenever you're using the parametric history, and I guess this is kind of a, a good point for everyone, you should always think about when using parametric history, um, hey, I want to be able to control this, you know, in the model. So I have to build appropriately to, to obtain that. So, so not yeah. as you're in the middle of the model, right? In the beginning, you should always think about what you want to be able to control in that model. Exactly, exactly. Um, that this is very, very important about that, right? Yeah. Right. And someone asked uh, for you to showcase um, Cage Edit, so I'm glad you're doing that right now. So um, yes, that way she can watch. Yes, as you can see, is uh, the Cage um, in 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 Metrics Gold. Just the surface, uh, just we can turn on uh, the sur we can we can turn on the control points of the surface, not poly surface and solids. So if we, we, we need control point to adjust it, manipulate it, and um, we need the cage edit. Cage edit is um, it's very, very important command because it gives us um, a cage, a bounding box. And with that, we can change uh, the shape of our poly surface, solid surface, and we can do a lot of things. I use it a lot. I use, I, I use this uh, command a lot. Uh, just, um, 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 just I wanna, uh, if, if we have time, uh, just I wanna show you some things about Cage. I did maybe very interesting for um, um, audience. Yep. About, yeah. Um, I'm sure that um, uh, all, of, all of you have uh, this experience that your customer gives you a ring and let me show you. Let me bring this ring. Your customer gives you that ring and ask you to change uh, uh, this, uh, change the thickness of this uh, uh, this shank. Okay, and the the, uh, the bad part is. Sometimes it's possible, it's not difficult to do it because you can delete it, you can make uh, a, a profile, make profile and then um, uh, uh, sweep again. But in case I did, I wanna show you a hidden part. Uh, somebody, someone, let, let me uh, make them as a mesh so you can see better that I wanna make it the most, I wanna make it uh, very uh, difficult. So, I delete all gems. I don't need it. I can use the, the layers or I can go here and use the super select. I select all, I want to be sure. Okay, it's no naked edge, no non-manifold. So I go to manufacturing, mesh repair. The mesh repair is, um, 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 uh, is very good. Uh, command before printing and manufacturing, you can use it. It gives you a uh, uh, um, uh, integrated, uh, a complete healthy mesh that when you send for printing, you, wish you are sure that, oh, it's perfect. So it doesn't have any problem. So it works very well. Okay, great. I don't I forgot to delete this one. Okay, so I delete this. 
So we have a mesh and we want to change uh, the thickness of these parts, okay? You want to change the thickness of these parts. So let me do a customer ask you. So when, when you use the cage edit, bounding box, word, maybe you can say that I want, I want uh, 10, 10, and 10, okay? And then you try to just, you know, change these parts, change here, you know, it's, so it's really difficult and complicated and uh, uh, you cannot have very a smooth change on your uh, shank. So what I recommend you is that in cage edit, you just make a circle. And then make another one. So I want to change it here. I can use, I can say that it's somewhere like this. Okay. Hide it. I use these, just make one line to trim here. I don't need these. And then do loft between these two curve. So you know that the loft is a very, very good command where you don't need any profile. So you have one, two, three control point on this direction and you have enough control point on this direction. Okay, you turn on your ring. So what happened? We have one surface in the middle of this shank. I don't need this anymore. I just uh, change here. So um, I didn't make uh, one half. I just make here because I wanted to show you uh, in a very fast way. So now we go to cage edit command. I can type it or I can go to transform menu and you can find it here. Cage edit. Cage edit. Okay, select the captive object. Captive object, it means this ring, okay? And now select control object. I just changed the deformation to fast. Now select the control object. I don't choose the bounding box. I choose this surface, okay? And then rejigen to edit this global, press enter. So what happened? This surface, You can see it. This surface control my shank. You can see it. It's much easy. Right? This surface will control my shank. So I don't need to use a massive bounding box. And, uh, and then we just, and as you can see, we, we never destroy the ring size, right? We just move these parts. So we can make it thicker or thinner. And then for, for having the symmetry, just you need to make half. Because I, I, was, I, I, I was sure that this is a um, um, mesh repair. So it has a lot of uh, um, uh, faces. Um, I mean, mesh, the density is high. So it make my computer a little bit laggy. So I just make this part. But if you want to make in uh, half, uh, half of your shank, you just need to select this and this and then a scale. Select this and this and then a scale. So it's really good. You don't need to have a, a bounding box. You just need use the surface as your cage edit. And then you can make it thick. No, thick. You see, you didn't destroy. You have your ring ray and then you have this. We do have one more question about Jolly. Yeah. Um, he he yeah. asks if we can put our own pattern in the Jolly command, and if oh, he yeah. can change Jolly thickness in Smart Patterns. Uh, uh, sorry, she, uh, he said. She said what? Sorry. 
a, uh, we, we have your own own parametric own uh, jelly pattern right that i show in my in youtube and facebook right she's asking yep. about that um, yeah, yeah yeah i think you, so you can upload your own yes pattern yes exactly it, right yeah as i uh, as i show in a video uh, if you have any hatch pattern hatch pattern is a combination of numbers that uh, you can uh, find it or in in, um, in a rhino library we have we have it you can download it and then it's really easy just you go to your down uh, documents metrics code and uh, a library pattern and then you have it as you can see the hatch pattern oh i don't want to open it here edit uh, open with notepad as you can see the hatch is a combination of um, it's a combination of numbers you can see that each number stands for some things that control some things you can see so these numbers you can import to jelly and then it's perfect just change uh just change uh, to PAT format, that's it, pattern, PAT format. And then you have it. You copy it, you copy in this uh, folder. And then if, uh, if we have it, planet surface, Here, we go to curve and we go to jelly pattern. And then on the bottom, we can see I have my own pattern, Momo, for example, select, and then we have it. Or I can change it to another one, this one, select, and then we have it. Yep. Select. This is a made by myself, right? Or download from the advisor. We have it here, right? We can, very nice. we can you know. Yeah, it's very, it's, this is the benefit of Matrix code that I really like it. It's super, super uh, flexible and user-friendly. You can copy, even you can make your own profile parametric, you can make your own uh, pattern parametric. It's really good. It's really good for me. And I'm sure a well, lot of people can use it, right? Yeah, well, I definitely appreciate you for joining us. Uh, is there any final questions? Uh, yes, sir. From Mosin? Um, while that, I, I, like I said, I really appreciate you joining us and showing us a couple of things. I love the way you incorporate, you know, parametric history and some of the, the um, Rhino commands like, you know, curve network and kind of get them all to work together. That's one thing that a lot of, a lot of people don't necessarily know is you can actually string together Rhino history and parametric history um, yeah. to make, you know, essentially anything. So, yes, exactly right. We have to use because um, we have the low class history that uh, Rhino supported, and we have high class uh, history parametric that use a lot of programming uh, lines that uh, uh, that helps us to uh, keep our object parametric, right? So mixing these together, it gives us a very, um, uh, a very amazing feature, very amazing power to make a, a lot of uh, rings, this kind of ring. So as you, the, 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 you know, this is very good for me that one time I calculate that if I, if I change um, these features that I, if I didn't have the parametric one, I have to add up 50% of my time. I mean that if I finish wondering in two hours and I wanted to change it, I have to add two hours more to change the pattern, to change um, size, change the stone. And this was, this was, this was in a very complex surface. Um, I, I hope one day I will show you a very, very complex surface just with these uh, uh, comments too. I can show you later. Sure. Yeah, right. that's a that's a great point. So, well, it doesn't look yeah, like we have any questions. So, um, Mosin, uh, again, appreciate you for joining us. Um, 
You're and welcome. I, I want to say thank you to you also. Sure. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Uh, hopefully we can get you here again. But the um, uh, if you guys are looking or interested in obtaining a recording, uh, please email info at gymvision.com. Uh, as I said, we only share with legitimate license holders of Matrix, Rhino Gold, Matrix Gold, CounterSketch. Um, so if you do, please shoot us over you know, your info and we'll be happy to get that recording out for you. So, um, so yeah, that'll do it from my side and uh, <laughs> hope all of you have a great day and thanks again, Mosin. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.